In the early 2000s, a new phrase entered the Chinese vernacular, Ren Zhao Mei Nu. It means artificial beauty, and it laid the foundation for what's become a cultural phenomenon in China, cosmetic treatments. The Miss Plastic Surgery pageant in 2004 marked the country's growing acceptance towards going under the knife. All part of a cosmetic surgery boom, fueled by the country's burgeoning middle class who have more disposable income than any generation before them. If you look historically, sociologically, and philosophically, beauty has always been a commodity for centuries. You go back to the ancient Egyptians or the ancient Chinese, they always placed a very high regard on people who are beautiful. What's changed nowadays is that you can buy a bit of that beauty. But as they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. In China, however, Beauty is increasingly becoming in the hands of plastic surgeons. The country's facial and body enhancement industry is booming. The market in China is now worth over $30 billion, making up 17% of the global industry. Innovations in non-surgical and surgical procedures have brought prices down to a cost accessible to everyone. With the advent of dissolvable fillers, Botox, we have realized that we can achieve some form of beauty without actually having to undergo the knife. The arrival of dedicated cosmetic apps have made booking surgery as simple as ordering a takeout. But breakout growth has left regulators playing catch up. And as the Chinese government looks to crack down on the cosmetic surgery industry, the days of paying for perfection might be numbered. So I've been in China operating, working, teaching, and uh, observing the changing trends for the last 17 years. And I will say that um, people have gotten a lot more bold in what they want to see for themselves. Dr. Waffles Wu, who currently operates out of Singapore, has been a plastic surgeon for over 30 years. In 2006, he was appointed the honorary head of plastic surgery at a hospital in Hangzhou, where he trained surgeons. Over the years, he's seen China's industry grow not only in size, but also ambition. 20 years ago, it would have been the usual kind of double eyelid or maybe a, a little bit of a higher nasal bridge, and that would be it. They'd be happy with that. But with a lot of products and a lot of new techniques being available to the Chinese, they've gone into it full force. And so now they're into contouring the face, shaving the cheekbones, shaving the jaw bones, doing their nose, their eyes, their breasts, and fixing their skin. China's medical aesthetics industry, which includes surgery, injections, and skin treatments, has been growing at an unmatched rate. Its cosmetic surgery market, which was virtually non-existent a few decades ago, is now the second largest in the world after the US. With an annual expansion that's more than three times faster than anywhere else, it's poised to become the biggest this year. In 2020, sales revenues were an estimated $51 billion. Like many industries in China, technology and innovation over the last two decades have played a central role. In early 2000, majority of the marketing was done offline, just sort of traditional advertising on the streets. But then it sort of gradually evolved onto Baidu, so, so more sort of on the internet browser searcher space. Um, but then in the recent past few years, we've seen lots of vertical integrated mobile phone apps being advanced in the market. Ooh, looks fancy. <laughs> Be kind. Lens of my two eyes are different. It's nice. <laughs> Geng Mei, which means more beautiful in Chinese and so young, are just two of the many social networking platforms in China dedicated to cosmetic surgery. I can't read this, but it's obviously saying it's perfect. From connecting prospective patients to recommending nearby surgeons and even offering microloans to pay for the treatments, 
These apps are a one-stop shop for all things beauty. Cute face. Great. Within minutes of logging on, a user can book and pay for pretty much any treatment on the market. And if you can't decide what you want done, it can help with that too. Aloof girl's face, who needs filler? Yeah, totally. <laughs> so I think this is now a lot more first-hand and interactive. Consumer can now quite easily get their hands on um, to, to really understand some of the treatment they want to receive. For many consumers, the apps offer more transparency around procedures than previous forms of advertising. And the sheer volume of information available has made the decision to go under the knife much easier. So Young has already been downloaded more than 400 million times in China since its launch in 2014. Because of the internet and the way they advertise, of course, that knowledge becomes instantly available to anybody looking for plastic surgery. So it has really grown. But public awareness around unhealthy beauty standards are growing. In August, China's market regulator drafted guidelines to reform advertising practices, saying that they were prompting societal anxiety over people's looks. They try to appeal to their potential consumers and with the message that, you know, your body is something that you can improve. So meaning that even your identity is not pinned down. So then that's one of the strategy and then it, what we call in, in academia interpolation. So meaning that, you know, you position the consumer in, in, in a place where uh, they feel that, you know, they are summoned to consume these products. Then they also have diverse procedures. So they made it so uh, at different price range, whether you have lots of money and then you can have something, um, you know, more expensive. But if you even have, you know, not so much money, but you can still save money and to have a simple procedure. Cost is always a factor when it comes to cosmetic surgery because that's disposable income, right? Millennials in China, many of whom have grown up as part of the one-child policy, have more disposable income than ever before. The country will more than double the number of millionaires in the next five years and boost the size of its middle class by almost half. Cosmetic surgery is a conspicuous consumption. Um, so in a sense, it was almost like a luxury item, right? And when people have more money, they have more disposable income. So they feel that it's all right to, um, you know, use that money as a kind of investing um, to, to show that they can consume something that was not available to the previous generation. But even for those with a little less cash to spend, there are options. Traditional surgery to give you a nasal bridge with a, a piece of silicone or a piece of Gore-Tex would cost upwards of $10,000. But with a syringe of filler, which you can just inject in the clinic, you can get a semblance of that improved projection and contouring of the nose. And that costs about one-tenth, if not less, than the surgery itself. So for somebody who's a little tight on budget, they would tend to do the non-surgical procedures, which are infinitely cheaper than the uh, surgical procedures and with fewer complications. So that has been a burgeoning uh, market, and it's always what we call the entry point for these young people who wish to dabble in plastic surgery as they would dabble with new makeup. The average age for those going under the knife in China is 24 years old, with over 80% being female. And the number of under 20s opting for treatments is increasing. One of the most popular procedures among the younger clientele is double eyelid surgery. I did a double eyelid surgery in July uh, 2016 after the university entrance examination. Uh, I did it mainly for two reasons. The first is uh, I don't like my single eyelid. It's very difficult to make up. Another reason is my mom. She thinks my eyes are too small, so uh, surgery is very necessary. Eyelid surgery was one of the popular procedures. For one thing, it was quite affordable in comparison to a nose drop. So it might cost just a couple hundred US dollars, like about 1,000 Chinese yuan. You know, this one-try policy, I mean, 
parents are quite willing to help their children to get started. You know, at a very competitive society. I heard about numerous stories actually about、um, uh, parents paying for this kind of simple surgery as a gift for graduation, for example. Beyond just aesthetics, some consumers hope that changing their face may change their fate in the country's highly competitive job market. Today, you have to be beautiful to succeed. The competition to find a job is so fierce. Many believe being operated on helps you stand out. A new report is drawing attention to widespread gender discrimination in job ads for Chinese companies. In 2018, a Human Rights Watch report pointed to several job postings that openly specified requirements in gender and appearance. Changing their aesthetic beauty, they can somehow enjoy some social advantages.、Uh, several people tell me that they can find a better job, for example,、uh, at the job market, or they feel that it's investment、um, in the sense that in the long term they can get some kind of、uh, return. It's not so much about whether or not they like to have cosmetic surgery, but rather they feel that that's an opportunity that they cannot miss out. So if they can actually invest a little bit money and then undergo a, a painful procedure, but however there's a reward at the end, so they they would try the best you know to do it if they can afford it. Like many parts of the world, beauty standards are being set and exacerbated by the presence of influencer and celebrity culture. They're constantly bombarding the internet space with images of what they think a beautiful face should be, and people therefore follow that and feel that that's what we should look like because everybody else is doing it, and all the influencers that have a certain kind of facial look. So this does rub off on the、uh, younger people, and it's exactly the same in China as it is in Singapore or any other part of Asia. In the Chinese culture, that kind of、uh, peer pressure and emulation can, you know, become a norm that people internalized and then later on kind of spread around. You will see some of the、um, internet celebrities. Sometimes they might have a doctor that specialize in the field to really sort of、um, um, speak quite openly、um, and in depth about some of the treatment. 这一次做完鼻子的话，将近三个月了吧。然后你们可以看一下，我现在鼻子恢复就是这个样子。有一些姐妹会说，觉得我之前的鼻子会更好看一些，但是我自己会比较喜欢这一次做的鼻子。But the same influences that help build the buzz have also fallen victim to its darker side. During the industry's explosive growth, demand for surgery massively outgrew the number of qualified practitioners able to supply it. Unlicensed clinics began performing illegal surgeries, which led to some fatalities. About 40,000 medical accidents occur in these unlicensed clinics every year, an average of about 110 per day. China had over 80,000 unlicensed institutions in 2019, accounting for about 84% of the market, with uncertified physicians making up 72% of all practitioners. But change could be coming. We will make more notable and substantive progress toward achieving well-rounded human development and common prosperity for all. President Xi Jinping's Common Prosperity Plan has seen entire sectors ordered to change the way they do business. The government really is pushing through some house cleaning、uh, when it comes to China's economy. They are talking about enforcing laws and regulations on so many corners of the economy at the moment. Industries that ballooned over recent decades have faced particular scrutiny. Leading analysts to question how long it will be before the cosmetic sector gets hit. Since the start of July, the market value of the country's three biggest publicly traded medical aesthetics companies has fallen by a third, representing a collective loss of more than 17 billion dollars as the industry plays a waiting game. So I think naturally there will be some reform in the market, both in terms of crackdowns on on malpractice. By that I mean. Um, companies that do not have the business license and the and the right accreditation to operate or give surgery in the market, and I think second is also regarding the reform on how authority can better regulate、um, some of the advertising of these institutes. I can understand, you know, if there are changes that kind of truncate, you know, or、uh, cut tail, you know, part of the industry or make it less. Profit driven, so that would probably be the trend because industries like that, at least in the Chinese case, 
always serve the ideology of the ruling government. But there are signs that the market could survive under a more watchful eye from Beijing. Medical tourism could even become a driver for the economy if the government can ease widespread safety concerns. They've made these special medical tourism zones where foreign companies can go and set up much more easily. Uh, foreign doctors can go and get their license uh, much more easily as well. Uh, there are certain tax breaks that I think are afforded to them. And so a number of American, European companies have moved into these areas to set up shop so that they can open up manufacturing plants and provide China with a constant stream of these essentially foreign-made products. And I think the Chinese authorities have done this because they realize that medical tourism is a very big uh, item and uh, can bring in a lot of uh, tourist dollars. Plastic surgery is a very normal thing in China. Many young people will change something they're not very satisfied with. But I don't think uh, beauty is everything, but the confidence maybe can really take you some more uh, better opportunities. But I think if you are not beautiful, but you are very confident and talented, the opportunity is also uh, dear for you. So I don't think it's just uh, the benefits of the beauty. 